mean, I've heard uh, Paul Herman say all the time, he'll ask a business owner, what's your greatest asset in the business? Yeah. And invariably, they come back and say, people. Right. And then Paul asks, where, where are people on the financial statements? Right. They're listed as a liability or a cost. So how, how do we really know how much a company is worth if we're not uh, quantifying the greatest asset of the company? So it sounds like you're, you're working towards starting to, to do some of that. Yes, but I, I share the frustration. Mm. Uh, my last 10 years in IBM Canada were, was in human resources and um, the accounting for the value of the labor force is, is pretty antiquated, mm. the way in which we do it. We need leadership from the CPA community mm. to help us with some of those metrics. Mm -hmm. I think it's really, really important that the CPA community provide a pull for more rigorous kinds of business cases from the sustainability professionals, that they help them understand what you need to be able to make a good decision on something. Right. And not to be worried about whether there is enough on the opportunity side and the risk side to be able to make this thing work. There is. Right, there is, right. but the, the comfort level of a lot of the sustainability professionals with all of that kind of an exercise is not quite where we'd like it to be, so they need to partner with CPAs mm. to be able to um, do it together and make sure that they are respecting and honoring all of the things that CPA trained people, MBA trained people, business people need to be able to make a decision. Right. Right. Well, that I totally agree with. Um, so I had one. I had one last piece that I can think of. So I, I've been at the conference and I've been listening to some of the pushback around, um, you know, quantifying these these intangible value and risk drivers, and people are saying they just don't believe that everything can be measured. Do you, do you believe that everything can be measured or, or do you kind of say, well, some things just really can't be measured? Like, where do you... So I think we need to get comfortable with the ambiguity of some of the measurements mm. and the, um, the roughness of some of the, the measurements. Because we're dealing with people in a lot of cases, it's very awkward to come up with a scale of one to 10 as to how things are going with people, you know? It's a very subjective kind of thing. But rightly or wrongly, business makes decisions based on numbers. And I think it behooves us to help choose which numbers we want them to make those decisions on and how to measure using those kinds of scales. Uh, it's unfortunate, but true. That, that's the game we have to play. I think maybe a little further down the, the journey, we'll get to the point where we don't have to do that. But I think we have to meet them where they are now. This is the way they make decisions. So give them the kind of data that they think they need to make the decision. When their comfort level gets a little higher, we can redefine what those metrics look like. Mm -hmm. But I think if we start off with new metrics or, or metrics that just seem very unusual to them, they're just going to fight and fight and fight and push back on them because they're so different from what their disciplines have required them to use. But it seems almost intuitive that it's almost like the question should be, do you agree, yes or no, that these things have a value? You're right. And of course they'd say they'd that. Say yes. But they're not required to report on them to well, the SEC or to anybody else, If they're right? material. You would think they would anyway, but they, but they report on what they're required to report on. It's the whole transparency issue, right? right. So uh, when you read and rank companies on how they're doing on a lot of things, it's a very limited list of things that you can use because companies don't have to disclose that stuff. And if they don't disclose it, how do you rank them? Well, so, here's a perfect example. The SEC has come out and said that climate change is material. Yeah. It's material. Right. So you'd think that companies would report on you it. You got to report on it you then, right? Think. And what do they do? What does the SEC do if they don't? Nothing. Exactly. That's the so there's no teeth in it. Right. So, you know, right. they're supposed to report on it, but it's a pretty lame approach that most companies use because they report on scope 1 maybe, maybe scope 2 and right. scope 1, but never scope 3. Right. So you get a very distorted view of how they're doing on things like climate change and greenhouse gas emissions and carbon dioxide and, and so on. Um, 
And unless there are teeth in the request or requirement to be transparent, it's, it's a game. Yeah. It's a game. You saying that reminds me of the CPA community, because when you bring these ideas and concepts to them and they are not the one that came up with it, right. and they don't understand it exactly, they tend to shut down and they're not gonna bring up anything to their client that they do not thoroughly understand right. and thoroughly believe in. Right where they could open up any kind of um, discrepancy between what they know and how they're serving their clients. Right. And I think with the CPAs though, if we're gonna advance this movement, we have to figure out a way to engage them. You're right, there are three professions that run the world. Right. CPAs, right. engineers, and maybe lawyers. Right. Um, all of them have a role to play. The most important one is CPAs. The second most important is engineers. Um, but CPAs are everywhere. I mean, they are everywhere. Yep. Or equivalents, like MBA types. But we have to ensure that the training that they receive as CPAs legitimizes the kind of thing that we're talking about. So right. somewhere in the certification process, right. there needs to be modules that talk about that. Somewhere in the MBA schools, there need to be modules that talk about this. Right. And then when they go out, they're ready for this. This is not a, a weird and, and wonderful business case. This is the, a normal business case. This is the way you do business cases. Right. This just happens to be about sustainability. So absolutely, I want to get this into the, the, the new business case into the hands of every sustainability professional on the planet by the end of next year. Right. I'm one guy. My channel, it's my most important channel, is the CPA community. community. Absolutely. They've got reach, they've got reach you would kill for. So if they require sustainability to present, sustainability professionals to present their case in this kind of a format, then we're home free. Right. Well, for every single business on the planet has a CPA attached to it. Every single one. There's not right. one business that does not exist that doesn't have a, I mean, that exists, that does not have a, a CPA. And what's the other piece to that, though, is that the finance people, the financial planning people, the wealth advisories, they have a lot of control, Huge. too. And Huge. a lot of CPA firms are also wealth advisor firms and yes. they also can be starting to look at sustainable and impact investing. Right. Same concepts, you know, different different medium, but the exact same concepts and the exact same premises. Yes. So the the investment community has huge influence on the business community, especially the publicly traded business yeah. community. Yeah. Uh, so they are another channel to be able to get to businesses through, that they are asking questions about things that are a little bit more pointed than they used to be, as to tell me again exactly what you're doing on climate change. Mm. Not that you care about it, but what are you doing about mm. it? Mm. Uh, and how is this setting you up to be a less risky company than this other competitor who's doing actually a little bit more than you are? Right. So the investment community is a wonderful cattle prod for the uh, the business community, uh, especially the impact investment community, which is growing and growing and growing, and they care more about both social as well as environmental impacts. Right. One more point is around the CPA community again. So they're without, they're not with out their challenges and they are needing to figure out ways to be sustainable themselves. Right. Fund exit strategies, succession planning, all of those things. And by bringing sustainability into their firm as another value add for clients, right. they can generate an entirely new revenue stream. They can use sustainability as a way to engage their millennials because their millennials are wanting to be more proactive, forward thinking, problem solving, instead of historians always looking at the you know, in, in the rear view mirror, they want to be focused on where we're going and how they can help their clients. So those issues of engaging their younger millennials, setting them and empowering them to start to bring sustainability into the firm Absolutely. with a tool like what you have, which is all packaged together with the yeah. rationale, easily trainable, yeah. generating additional revenue for the firm, dealing with their own succession planning, and helping their businesses with a tremendous value add, whether they're public or private. What's not the like? I mean, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we're, we're going to do that. I, I'm looking for uh, engaging the CPA community to take this Excel workbook and mm. create a, an online version of it. Um, I haven't connected with them on that, so when is this coming out again? Yeah, right. <laughs>